All right, here we go. I have been writing for 10 years. During that time, I have written and revised six novels. I have also submitted five of those novels repeatedly, seeing nothing but rejection. Um, don't do what I do, but we'll get to that. So I started writing 10 years ago. Most people, when they're writers, they're like, oh yeah, I've been writing as far back as I can remember. I wrote my first book when I was 12. I don't know why that was a terribly sad Irish accent for some reason, but you know, that's just what came out. But um, I did not start writing when I was 12 or in high school. I was a lost little child. Did not really have um, career goals. I don't know how people do that. Just pop out of the womb knowing what they want to do when they grow up. That was not me. One time when I was 13, I went to forensic science camp. That was more for my love of temperance Brennan than any kind of career aspiration. Yeah, frankly, I just did not know. I had no dreams. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I definitely wasn't writing. Didn't know I wanted to write. Then, 10 years ago, I started writing. Funnily enough, the first novel I ever wrote was based off of a dream. It was a young adult fantasy. I think a lot of people start writing with fantasy. I'm not sure why. Could be a way of escaping their world. So, my first book was a young adult fantasy. It took me about eight months to write. It had no plot at all. I did not know that at the time. I thought it was fabulous. So I wrote it and I revised it and I thought it was wonderful. And then right away I started submitting to literary agents for traditional publication. That was probably a mistake, but you know, you just, you learn as you go. The main thing I learned while I was writing that first book is that I could write a book from start to finish, revisions and all. And I think that's the first lesson a lot of people need to learn when they're trying to be a writer. I think it's pretty easy to start writing a bunch of books and then the years pass and you have all these story beginnings building up and you still think of yourself as a writer, but you've never actually completed a book. So it's kind of hard to progress between the writerly steps if you don't learn the first lesson of writing, which is, can you complete a book? And that's what I learned in the first book. It was terrible. I thought it was great. It was not. It was definitely a practice novel. When I think back on it now, I have no desire to ever return to it. So, basis of the story. Um, teenage girl in kind of a desolate urban fantasy setting. Tons of abandoned skyscrapers, concrete jungles type of thing, small population of remaining people. Not really a dystopian, just like an urban fantasy of sadness. And she has to support her family until she goes to her job every day, but she's scared walking in the desolate urban landscape until she runs a lot. And then one day, to start off the story, she runs and she accidentally sees people using magic. And magic is secret and she's not supposed to see them and you know, la di la. Terrible plot happens, but. That story was called The Sunflower Effect and it was based off of a dream I had where I was in an abandoned parking lot at night and I had to fight my way out of it against a person using magic. But I was not capable of magic, so I had to like out with them. It was a fun dream, interesting, kind of scary. That was the basis of the whole book. Sounds kind of cool when I talk about it now, but the book itself was not cool. And like, maybe if I got some more ideas in the future about how to flesh out the story and the characters and everything in the world, I might return to it, but at the moment I have no desire to ever return to it. I have made my peace with that book, it's buried in the yard. The second book I wrote, I started writing about four months after I finished the first book. I had been submitting, I think I only submitted it about 20 times, maybe more, all rejections. And then I moved on and I thought, wow, this book's worse than I thought. But I didn't actually think that at the time, that took several years. So the second book I wrote, I thought maybe my book was too complicated. I need to tone this down, write something simpler that I can actually handle. So I wrote a book. It was a young adult contemporary story called If You Tell Me Not To. About a teenage girl who lost her brother right before she goes to college. She's 18, newly fresh in the world, trying to make her way through her grief. And she meets some people who are older than her who really like her and she just goes along with them because they're into her and she likes it and she doesn't know why. She's never been cool before. And here are these cool older people showing her interest. And then later she finds out that these people knew her brother or were connected to her brother in some way and then she feels all used and confused and it's that kind of story. It was meh. I mean, it was definitely better than the first story but again, no real interest in returning to it. That story is also buried in the yard with a headstone. I, I have no, no interest in going back to that story. The main thing I learned from writing and revising and submitting and being rejected with If You Tell Me Not To was how to structure a story. When I wrote The Sunflower Effect, I mean, I had the general basis of beginning, middle, and end, but I didn't even really have that at the time. I, you know, I got to the end of the book and there was no conclusion or finale or anything. And I was just like, eh, the rest of it will happen in the next book. And that is no way to write a story. So when I wrote If You Tell Me Not To, I went into it with the intention of having a contained story, beginning, middle, and end. And I succeeded, I, I did do that. 
wrote it, I revised it, I submitted it. I think actually with that story, I got two manuscript requests out of all of my submissions. All ended in rejection, but you know, you live and learn. The third book I wrote was another young adult contemporary. It was called Slam. It was about a teenage girl who joins the performance poetry team at her local university. Her dad is a professor there. She's about to start her first year in college. I wove maybe 10 or 12 original poems into the narrative, which was really, really fun to write not only the poems, but also to, incor to incorporate them as scenes of performed dialogue. By the time I finished that book, I had finished college. I submitted the novel to Pitch Wars, connected with a couple of different writers for feedback on our novels, and in, in creative writing workshops in college and through Pitch Wars, I learned how to receive feedback, or I at least started to learn how to receive feedback. I learned how to not dread it. But yeah, I mean, I feedback, especially from a large number of people, like in a in workshop, it's interesting to work through because, I don't know, you kind of start to decide like who's literary tastes most align with yours and so you take their feedback like more thoroughly than you might take other people's. I don't know how to- I guess I really did learn how to judge what feedback I feel like applies to my story and what feedback I feel okay rejecting for the story. I was not accepted into Pitch Wars. And so besides feedback, the second main thing I learned from writing Slam was how to be rejected. I was rejected a lot. I had been rejected a lot by that point in my life and the rejections would just keep on coming. But in writing the novel, I really figured out how to add depth and meaning and like true character, people, life into the story. So there were many more layers in that novel than there were in my previous two novels. I think by this point in my writing career, I was really learning how to learn about writing. You know, in the months leading up to starting a new manuscript, I would read books and articles and watch YouTube videos about story structure, plot, and character development, depth, and language, and imagery. I would just try to soak up as much as I could, and then I would go and try to identify it in other stories both in film and in books, and then try to apply it to my own writing. By Slam, that was the first novel that I took almost an academic approach to the science of storytelling, trying to tell a complete appealing story, rather than just like writing kind of flimsily what comes to my mind, as I had done for the previous two novels. So Slam is not buried in the backyard, but I mean, it's in a casket. Someday I might return to it. I liked it. I mean, I still like it, I guess. Someday. Someday. It's currently tabled, but not dead yet in between If You Tell Me Not To and Slam. Because I had learned a lot more about adding depth and layers and intricacy to stories, I, I, I remember when I first started writing Slam, I remember thinking of it as a contemporary story with the plot of a fantasy because I felt strong enough again in my writing abilities to try to tackle a more complex plot world situation. And so I guess maybe Slam was like my, my gateway again into fantasy. So. The fourth book I wrote was a young adult fantasy. It was more of a sci-fi fantasy because the magic came from science. That book was called Sky Harper is Not an Alien. It was rejected widely. It got a few manuscript requests. Part of me thinks it was rejected so much. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> of course it was rejected because of the market. But no, seriously. Um, because aliens are not popular and it has the word alien in the title even though there aren't actually aliens in the story. I don't know, but. The young adult fantasy about a teenage girl who's been homeschooled her whole life in a rural area. Her mom is a scientist who kind of keeps towing the line of what is appropriate and ethical in science, but manages, she's a theoretical physicist, manages to identify a power source in space. Attempts to harness it. Um, you know, chaos ensues. It was a really fun story. And sometimes I really think I want to return to that story again started submitting it, was rejected roundly, eventually tabled it. It's beside slam in a casket, not yet in the yard. Um, that was the first story I wrote with the intention of writing a trilogy. So I knew it was going to be the first book in a series, but I had also fully established that that did not mean it did not have to be a complete story on its own. And so I developed it as a complete story, but I also developed ideas for the sequels. And I still really like those ideas, like a lot, a lot. And they still feel like they belong with that story and world. Like I can't just steal them and put them in some other story of mine. So for now, Sky Harper is tabled, but I really do want to return to her because I liked it a lot. And I know there are things like after distance, time and distance between me and the story, I recognize that there are things that really need elevating in the plot and character and world level. The main thing I learned from 
Sky Harper was how to write a climax because a lot of my books, all of my books previously to Sky Harper, kind of just fizzled out at the end. Like the end, there was no more tension than any other point in the story and there wasn't a good sense of build from the beginning to the climax. Like the tension was not always increasing. And so with Sky Harper, I spent a lot of time really focused on learning how to increase the tension with every scene without just overcomplicating the story so that the climax is really suspenseful and feels satisfying. When I think about it, yeah, I did. I really like that story. Someday, someday. The fifth novel that I have written is called Unmask. It's a young adult contemporary mystery. Always wanted to write mystery. I'd always been scared to write mystery, so I thought, hey, I'll give it a go. So I submitted that novel for probably over a year. It was rejected a lot, but I also got a lot of full manuscript requests. So I could tell this was my strongest story because I got like 25 manuscript requests and none of my other stories had even come close. I think literally my maximum at that point was two before Unmask. A young adult contemporary mystery. Her parents go on sabbatical. She moves in with her parents' friends that she has not seen since she was little. Feeling really kind of tossed around and abandoned, left behind, learns about a missing boy and decides to solve his case. She wants to find him. It's a cold case mystery of a missing boy. And the main thing I learned writing Unmask and all the rejection with Unmask, the feedback I got from my full request rejections, I had a revise and resubmit that ended in rejection and it was painful. But the main thing I learned with this novel was how to make a story good. This is far and away the best novel I had ever written. Even prior to all of the feedback I had received and all of the revisions I have made on it since submitting it, I still have one full manuscript request out. I stopped submitting it after it was rejected a bazillion times and also when I started writing my sixth and current novel. But it's kind of shocking to even compare it to what it was in the beginning, the beginning of submitting where it was already, you know, heavily revised on my end to what it is now, post feedback from agents, from full manuscript requests and rejections. It's such a different story. It's a, such a better story. And I can really so clearly see all of the problems it had and all of the problems it still has. And I recently had an idea for how to make that story, like how to really unify and write an even more cohesive, tight story for that story. I learned, I feel like I learned the most writing this fifth novel, but really, I mean, it's just shocking how much you learn every time you complete a novel. You have to complete the novel in order for you to learn anything. Because, <laughs> I mean, the starting is the easiest part. Finishing is hard. It can be hard on your soul, but that story is not dead. It's, it's still alive. I'm planning on returning to it. I'm currently working on my sixth novel, a young adult fantasy. It's a fantasy mystery combining my two loves. Yeah, so let me make some coffee and I'll tell you more about that novel. The sixth book I wrote is the book I'm currently working on. The first draft is done. I am currently working on the second draft. This book is a young adult contemporary fantasy. I've been thinking of it as the Da Vinci Code set in a magic school. It's a puzzle mystery. I've always wanted to write a puzzle mystery, but this book is also the book that has given me the most trouble, by far, head and shoulders above all the others, the most trouble I've ever had writing a book. It's this book. I do think it's likely that a big part of my problem with this novel is that my last novel was rejected so roundly even after having so much interest in it in the publishing industry. I think my writing confidence took a hit so I'm still building back from that. I got knocked down but I'll get up again. You can follow my slow progress writing this book um, in my vlog series if you want to slow progress. So the first draft is done. The main thing I have learned from writing this book is that you just can't quit. I mean, that's all there is to it. That's that's literally the only thing you need to be a writer. And maybe this would be more meaningful if I had succeeded in my efforts to be published as of yet, and I have not, but, but someday I will. And I know I will because I just won't quit, you know? Like sometimes when I'm writing, I literally just sit there and think to myself like Finding Nemo, just keep swimming. Except not the happy part where Dory's saying it to Marlin, but the scary stressed out part at the end where they're all trying to swim down and rescue the fish in the net. Do they say just keep swimming at that scene? Do they just say swim down? I don't know, it's been a long time since I saw that movie, but either way, you just can't quit. You just have to keep writing. And you never know what else I might learn while I'm working on this story. I've got the first draft, I'm working on the second draft, and this is a slow, 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 slow journey. But, you know, I'm hoping maybe someday 
I'll be able to learn what it's like to be traditionally published with this book and then I'll let you know how that goes. But even though right now it's still just a dream, the main thing I've learned is that you just can't quit. Say that to yourself when you're writing. Just keep writing. Just keep writing.